Wayne's World was a huge phenomenon in the 90s. Everybody was into it. I mean, you couldn't go more than 10 minutes without hearing somebody say, not or no way way like pretty much everybody else i was into wayne's world i still have my wayne's world soundtrack cassette that i got from one of those columbia house 10 tapes for a penny deals look for this offer in your tv guide newspaper or mail today we're going to check out filming locations for the 1992 classic wayne's world let's go see what we can find now i'm sure most of you recognize this location this was wayne's house now some things have changed, of course the house has been updated a little bit, but it pretty much looks like it did in the movie. As you can see, there's no basement window down there. That was probably never actually there. The odds are this house does not have a basement. That's not a uh, very common thing here in the San Fernando Valley. That's where the big TV truck would have been parked, right there. And directly across the street from Wayne's house, this was Garth's house but has, I think, been torn down and rebuilt. Um, it looks nothing like it did in the movie. The only thing that really matches up is the lamp post right here. Garth would have come out his front door and run out into the street right here. And right here is where the hockey net would have been, and this is where they played street hockey. And right here is where we see Stacy riding her bike down the sidewalk. She rides right past this house, and although the garage door has been updated, that is the same house. She rides down the sidewalk right here past Wayne's house, and then right here is where that blue car was hanging out of the driveway onto the sidewalk. She ends up hitting the car and flipping over the hood. Wayne and Garth would have been standing right here watching her, and this garage can actually be seen in the background behind them and looks exactly the same as it did in the movie. Same color trim and everything. The scene with them riding in the Murph Mobile listening to Bohemian Rhapsody was actually filmed in two different states. In all the close-up shots, they're driving right here on Citrus Avenue. And in all the far away shots, they're passing by different Chicago landmarks. They used this intersection right here of Citrus and College a few times. And this building right here on the right side, this was the Aurora Bank and Trust. In one of the close-up shots, you can see this Taco Bell in the background behind Wayne. Of course, it's been updated since then. Well, right here is where they pick up a partied out fill. And unfortunately, this is one of the few buildings on this stretch of street that's been completely remodeled and doesn't look at all like it did in the movie. But the way that you can really tell that this is the right spot is this building right over here across the street. Right about here is where the bus bench would have been that Phil was sitting on. And we come back to this intersection one more time. This is where they pull up next to the car and they do the Grey Poupon joke. Now all these buildings right here look pretty much just like they did in the movie. Notice this one right here with the white bars connected to the awning. And the building next door is still a hobby shop. It just has a different name. Now this is of course the music store that Wayne repeatedly goes to to look at the white on white Fender Stratocaster. Same exact address on the side of the building right there, and the music store even has the exact same name. The only thing that it's missing is that awesome 80s style sign that we see in the movie. The Murph Mobile would have pulled up and parked right here in front of the store. Right there is where Wayne would have stood, staring at the Fender Stratocaster. And then he turns to the camera and says the famous line, It will be mine. Now they did film the movie inside this store and I believe there's still quite a few remnants in here. So let's go see if we can find them. So it pretty much feels like I just walked into the movie. Not much has changed at all inside this music store. Right here in front of me, this is where that platform would have been with the plexiglass case holding the white on white 1964 Fender Stratocaster. And right up there would have been the no stairway sign. If we come around to this side, and we take a look, pretty much right where that accordion is, that's exactly where the guitar would have been. 
And right here in the back of the store, this is where the drums would have been set up that Garth plays. This here is the platform and case that we see in the movie. Now, of course, that's not the same guitar. The owner was actually telling me that the Fender Stratocaster that they used in the movie wasn't even a real guitar. It was a prop that was made just for the movie. The one that's in here is a Fender Squire that appears to be signed by Penelope Spears, the director. However, this right here is the same May I Help You guitar that we see Mike Myers play in the movie. It's so cool that he has this whole Wayne's World display right here in the back of the store. Now, the owner of the store was just telling me that Paramount Pictures actually made two versions of the No Stairway sign. The version that you see in the movie, and then this version that they ended up not using, and they just left it behind when they were done filming, so now he has it here on display. But it is so cool in here. The store looks almost completely untouched from how it looked in the movie. I mean, look at these different colored pieces of plexiglass hanging from the ceiling. These can be seen in Wayne's World. So I was just saying to the owner that pretty much the only thing that's missing is the blue sky border that was going along the top of the wall. And that's when he went to the back room and pulled this out. This is one of the actual borders that we see in the movie and it was left behind by the crew. Now, like I mentioned, one of the few things missing was that awesome 80s style neon sign. And the owner confirmed that that was never actually here. It was added just for the movie. And he actually has some pictures of them putting the sign up. So the owner of the store was extremely nice and welcoming and had lots of stories to share with me. It's really awesome to see businesses embrace the movies that were filmed there. This is a really cool music store and I highly recommend coming to check it out if you haven't already done so. Now we see the Murph Mobile coming down the street right here. Notice these two signs. They come down the street and they turn right here into this parking lot and this was Stan Makita's Donuts. Now the building looks a lot different. At the time, it was pretty much all windows, glass from floor to ceiling. I think that's mostly what makes it look different. Of course, also it's missing the hockey player on top of the building. But if you really take a look at the shape of the building, you can tell it's the exact same place. Also, this sign up here is exactly the same as it was in the movie. Now they pull into the parking lot and they park right back here near the corner. There's a couple of cars on the other side of them with some people hanging out. They get out and they walk through the parking lot this way up to the front of the donut shop. And this is where they run into Officer Kohowski. Uno momento, fellas. Now I kind of peeked through the window right now and it doesn't look anything like it used to. And like I said in the movie, this whole building was pretty much windows. So you're able to see all of these buildings in the background when they're inside. So pretty much right about here is where Ed O'Neill would have been standing. And then, like I said, you can see these buildings behind him. And I believe it was that one right there that was another section of the donut shop. Now there's quite a few buildings on this side that you're able to see in the background behind them looking through the windows. And that would mean that somewhere right here on the other side of this wall, this is where the jukebox was, where Garth does the foxy lady dance. This is Gasworks, the club that Wayne and Garth come to and where they first see Cassandra's band playing. And this would have been the front entrance. This is where Meatloaf was working the door. You can kind of still see right there behind the fence that archway right there that can be seen behind him. And the Murph Mobile would have been parked right over here. And Garth comes over here to get his little contraption. The high-rise building used for the exteriors of Benjamin's office is located in Chicago. For now, we'll just use Google Maps to get an idea of what it looks like today. At this now abandoned Firestone Tire Center, this is where Phil worked and where they bring the Murph Mobile to get an inspection. Now I just found out that this was the location they used and what's crazy is 
this Target right across the street. I come to this Target probably about once a week and had no idea that this was the location they used. Now, the Murph Mobile would have been right here in this bay. Of course, we don't see a lot of the outside of the building, but you can see some of the back of the building. Let's go check that out. Oh, wow. A lot of graffiti going on back here. And this is not, you know, really a normal thing for this area. So right about here is where Garth would have picked up that air wrench and then scratched the car. And behind him, this wall can be seen and these trees, there would have been a car parked right here. And you can also see this section of the building quite a bit. Right about there is where the Murph Mobile would have been. This was the Channel 10 TV station and a lot has changed here, but there's still a few things that remain that look the same as they did in the movie, like the design of the brick on the front of this building right here matches up perfectly to what we see in the movie. I'm also pretty sure that this tree right over here can be seen in the movie. And if that is the same tree, that would mean that right about here is where the front entrance used to be. And for some odd reason, they moved the front doors over here and added this awning. We get a shot like this of his car pulling up and there would have been all of those fake lamp posts going down the sidewalk right there. And then right over here is where that giant satellite dish would have been. So right over there would have been the lawn that they're crawling across when Garth falls on his keys. And then they bring the TV equipment out the front doors right there. And Russell would have been hiding right behind that tree waiting for them. This building was used as the exteriors of the restaurant that Wayne, Garth, and Benjamin go to to discuss their TV deal. Now in the movie it was called Daddio's and it had a giant pineapple around the front door. However, the exterior shot of that restaurant was actually just taken from the movie Back to the Beach. If you look at this scene from Wayne's World and then compare it with this scene from Back to the Beach, you can see the same two-tone Chevy parked outside, you can see the exact same guy standing in the doorway, and you can see Dick Dale's name on the marquee in both movies. This is Cassandra's Loft, where Wayne and Garth come to the loft party to see Cassandra's band play. And they first see her band play at Gasworks, which is actually right across the street. After Wayne and Garth sign their big TV deal, they come here to see Cassandra's band play, and the Murph Mobile would have been parked right here in front of me, and they cross the street chanting their happy song. Now everything on the building pretty much looks the same, Except for right here, there was like a loading dock with some stairs leading up to it and some people hanging out on the stairs and that's gone now. I believe right there on the top floor, that would have been Cassandra's loft. You can see windows just like that behind the band while they're playing. And I'm pretty sure those rooftop scenes were actually filmed up here. If we look at Google Maps, you can see the slanted part of the roof where Cassandra is sitting and Wayne would have been sitting between her and the skylight right here. And towards the end of the movie, when Wayne's life starts going downhill, we see him come out that loading dock door and he walks down the steps right here and he's walking this way, talking to the camera. Now again, this looks a little bit different because these parking garage entrances weren't here. Right here, this is pretty much the exact shot where we get one of the famous scenes from the movie. Right here on 183rd, just besides the Cerritos Mall, this is where Wayne and Cassandra are driving when they sing Hey Mickey. We get a shot where we can see this center aisle right here and all these trees in the middle of the street. They continue down 183rd and pass right underneath the 605 freeway approaching Cerritos Auto Square. The high rise building that was used for the exteriors of Benjamin's apartment is also located in Chicago. So once again, we'll turn to Google Maps to get an idea of what it looks like today. I think my favorite part of this scene is when they're standing on the balcony and there's that extremely fake building that's about six inches from Wayne's head. The beginning of the Laverne and Shirley scene was filmed on the Paramount Studios back lot on New York Street, in the same area where they filmed the original Laverne and Shirley intro. You can see an overhead view of it here on Google Earth. Now that entire scene where Wayne is rushing to get Cassandra He's driving back and forth on Studebaker Road, 
right here next to Liberty Park. We first see Wayne speeding down the road right here, weaving in and out of traffic. We get close-ups of Wayne driving down the street right here with the park on one side of him and these stone walls on the other. So Wayne is now traveling in the opposite direction, coming back right past where he just was. And we see him go right past these tennis courts and everything right here looks exactly the same. These tennis courts, this fire hydrant, these utility poles, lamp posts, everything right here is exactly the same. As he passes through the intersection, the motorcycle cop comes out of this street and follows behind him, and we get a really good shot of this fence right here. Where the cop first takes off after him is right down there. You can see the tennis courts right here on the right side. And they're going the opposite direction of where I'm standing right now. But where Wayne ends up stopping is right here. A little bit of movie magic. Wayne would have been pulled over right here. You can see this lamp post and this tree right here, which has gotten a little bit bigger. And you can see this building in the background. We get a quick shot of Wayne looking in his side mirror, watching the cop approach his car. And you can see this house across the street. Notice the design right here. And Wayne realizes that he's been pulled over by the T-1000. He freaks out and he speeds off. Now I believe this is the exact same spot where Benjamin gets pulled over towards the end of the movie. Notice these big stadium lights in the background. Well, it looks a lot smaller than how it looks in the movie, but this is the waterfall where Cassandra and Crucial Taunt filmed their music video. And right here on this path is where Wayne's car would have pulled up, and pretty much right where I'm standing is where the craft service table was. Now if you notice this bench right here on the left side, it can be seen in the movie, However, the bench on the right side in front of the waterfall is covered up, but that's where the camera guy is standing, and Wayne walks up and opens up his camera and lets all the film come pouring out. So Cassandra would have been standing right here in the center of the waterfall. One guitar player would have been over here on this side. The other guitar player would have been standing down here, and the same log can be seen in the movie. And then right up here above him is where Anthony was. Who's Anthony? Who's Anthony? My drummer. Well, Benjamin and Mr. Sharp are both speeding down the highway trying to get to Wayne's house. And the highway that they're speeding down is actually Burbank Boulevard right here going through the Sepulveda Pass. I believe it was right here where we see Mr. Sharp's limo driving down the highway and then quickly making that U-turn right here in this intersection. Right here is where he would have almost collided with that truck. And if you notice right there on that lamppost, there's a one-way sign, and that can actually be seen in the shot. And of course, the movie ends in the same place where it began, right here at Wayne's house. First, we see Benjamin's car pull up and park right here in Wayne's driveway, and moments later, we see Mr. Sharp's limousine pull up and park right here in front. All right, that's going to do it for this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure you go do that right now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.